Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar discussion video. In this one I want to talk about the direction of the Avatar comics going forward uh, on a recent uh, Dark Horse live stream where they were covering the recent release of Katara and the Pirate Silver. Rachel Roberts was on and did actually give an update on Avatar and Korra comics. I, I covered most of this as like a news video before, but I didn't go particularly in depth in the discussion. So I have a few clips here that I'm going to play for you as well as just a lot of discussion on this. So the, the core premise of this video is that Rachel Roberts confirmed to us like twice, like two, two separate sections mentioned this, that there is a new um, direction for the Avatar comics, which is that they are moving away from the canon comic trilogy uh, you know, continuity, continuation. From The Promise all the way up to Imbalance, those six comic trilogies that continue the, the plot into sort of the Korra timeline to bridge the gap. That That is being put on hold. And all of their comics going forward for the next however long are going to be these one-shot style comics. And what they're sort of referring to them as is that this is their Avatar sandbox approach, which obviously, just by the word, is that they're basically taking the whole universe and they're using it as a sandbox. We can go play over here, over here, on the timeline, this character, that character. That's, the, that's what they're referring to it as. And the result is these one-shot comics, starting with Katara and the Pirate Silver, and being followed up with uh, Toph Beifong's Metal Bending Academy. Now, she also went on to confirm that at least the first three one-shots are going to be a specific trilogy with a theme to them, which is the Awesome Ladies of Avatar, which confirms to us that the third one-shot is going to have a female character on the cover, which I talked about in my previous discussion topic video, who I think it might be. But just them confirming that this is the direction going forward. They have specifically decided to not continue on post imbalance and have instead made this decision to do these scattered one shot comics. And she then later, in a separate part of the live stream, mentioned as part of the creative team meeting that Mike and Brian were the ones who put this parameter in place. That as they went into the planning stages of deciding what characters, what approach they're going to take for the one-shots to start it off with, the one limitation that they basically had was to do it in this sandbox approach. And in my mind, basically, don't continue past imbalance is kind of the way you're meant to interpret that. Um, and obviously the two comics that we have announced, one is set during the show, the other is set in the middle of the comic timeline. So it's not post imbalance, it's actually set after the rift. Um, so they can use a decent amount of the continuity, we don't know the full extent of that and we won't until they actually, I suppose, show us a book that maybe is a little bit more ambitious with where it's set. Um, but. It is interesting. It was a shock to me to be like, whoa, what, wait, wait, what? Mike and Brian were the ones saying basically, in a way, like, my, my interpretation ultimately of this is make the comics less important. Like, I don't think there's really any other way to interpret that other than their decision to do one shots and the quality of stories that are being told so far in these. Um, to me, it is a downgrade of the quality of stories that we're getting. I don't think you can really compare the individual parts of the trilogies that we've had up to now to what happens in this. Why do they make that decision? And this is where the overall timeline of things is kind of important to get into. But uh, before I do that, I will play the two clips of Rachel Roberts talking about the um, the direction change and Mike and Brian creating this new rule for how they're going to make the comics. One thing I did I did want to shine a little bit of a spotlight on um, for all of our Avatar fans um, is that we are moving from the canon continuations uh, of the series, um, like The Promise, The Search, The Rift, etc. Um, and we're moving into a more sandbox approach. So each book from here on out is going to be a one-shot format. Um, our next book in the series that we've announced is Toph Beifong's Metal Bending Academy. Most fun part of the entire process. Um, for these books in particular, we all got on the phone all together 
um, Faith, Peter, uh, Jenny, my, my assistant editor, and I, um, Joan Hilty at Nickelodeon, and then Tim Hedrick, who is our consultant on this series. Um, we all got on the phone together and we just had a story jam and just discussed what our most like loved characters were, you know, what story points we might want to talk about. Um, you know, we had a little bit of a parameter from Mike and Brian where, you know, they said we want to explore more of the sandbox idea. Um, so you can see there, the, the, the other factor in that as well is that on this kind of uh, call to decide the, the one shots, Mike and Brian weren't involved in it. They created this parameter that you can't do this, but it was Nickelodeon Dark Horse and uh, Tim Hedricks who were the ones making the, the decisions on this comic, not Mike and Brian. Now, this is where, like I said, the, the, the timeline of events in real life here is kind of important. This comic just recently came out, but this comic is like six plus months of work coming together finally being released. More than that, I, I suppose. So the, this comic was announced in March, so they had the cover description ready to go, and it was in production, like the art was being done and so on. But realistically, they had to have planned this well ahead of that, meaning that the meetings that Rachel Roberts is talking about, in addition to them getting the news from Mike and Brian to take this approach, had to have been given either at the very end of 2019 or the very, very start of 2020. <clears throat> and timeline-wise, what that means is that this decision was made while Mike and Brian were still working on the Avatar Netflix show, the live-action show. They left that project, uh, I think Mike's post stated that they left it in June. So that means that for the first six months of this year, basically, that rule, in my mind, was partly in place because Mike and Brian still felt that they were going much heavier into like full production on the Netflix show. And they potentially wouldn't have had the time and effort to put into the comics, novels and stuff like that that they usually would. So that's why Tim Hedrick has come on board to be the sort of story supervisor sort of position. Uh, and Mike and Brian have taken a step back. That is not the case anymore, though. They are not working on the Netflix show anymore, at all, in any capacity. They have distanced themselves from it. And in both of their statements about leaving the Netflix show, they both state that they are committed to working on Avatar. And what does that mean right now when there's no new show in production, um, uh, animated show in production? That realistically should mean them moving back to work on the comics, novels, or, or something like that. Just more work officially on you know the, the franchise, the animated continuity. So, does that rule still apply at this point in time? Given that Mike and Brian, as far as we're aware, like they said in their posts, are working, writing, doing art, I guess, for Avatar comics. Um, that's the interesting thing. How um, flexible are Dark Horse with that approach? How locked into one-shot comics are they? Up to how many into the future are we locked in? We're for sure getting the third one. There's no way they're going to stop this mid-trilogy. But it will be interesting to see if they do go into another trilogy of one-shots, given the timeline of how everything is planned out. My guess would be that they primarily planned out the first trilogy and maybe some ideas were put in place for the second one, but they might not have fully put the, the full deal in place or whatever to guarantee the next trilogy is happening. Because again, uh, the, the art has just been finished, I guess, on Toph, the Toph comic as of like a, not that long ago. So Peter Wartman, I guess, is going to be starting art on the third one shot at some point now where he's probably already working on it. Meaning that unless they are straight away planning to do the next uh, trilogy straight away or with a new creative team, they shouldn't be quite at that stage in the process. And they've now known for quite a few months that Mike and Brian are not doing that, uh, not doing the Netflix show anymore. So will we see potentially the return of more important Avatar comics coming up after this trilogy of one-shots? And how will that exactly work? Um, because as much as, you know, I, I think the one-shots are ultimately a good idea, but for me, my thing has always been, 
they should be in addition to the trilogies. They shouldn't be a replacement, which is what they've done now. Um, because I think I think what, what I've seen, like the, the responses in my video to like my reviews and me discussing uh, Guitar and the Pirate Silver, was mostly in agreement with me that like, look, yes, th th this is not at quite the same level as we were at before. Um, as a extra story in addition to our imbalance, our north and south, great, but not as a replacement and, you know, purposefully making a decision to not tell the important stories and instead tell these less important stories where they don't have to care about timeline and continuity, which is part of why one other thing from the um, live stream that stuck out to me was a relatively simple question, and I was not expecting this to be a sort of slightly controversial ans answer, was just uh, being a Rachel Roberts being asked, um, where on the timeline does the Katara comic take place? And her answer, like, I thought was needlessly, like, vague and secretive when the book is super clear about where it's set. Rachel Roberts basically says that, like, I think she mentioned a, a little bit before this that, like, it's set during book two. But she really was not committing to saying where during book two it's set. And then in the direct answer to the, the question about the timeline, she says, it's up to the imagination of the fans. This book, Katara and the Pirate Silver, as I mentioned, uh, falls during the events of the animated series. Um, about book two-ish, um, but we're not really putting a fine line on that. Um, just, it's up to the reader's imagination where it falls. I was just kind of like, what? Imagination? Like, wh what? Wh why are we talking about imagination when it comes to setting a comic in a timeline? Like, what? And And, and especially in this case, where... Page one of the book, literally page one, the second line of dialogue in the book tells you exactly when it's set. And this is in the like the, the week of release, like you'd think the book would be sort of fresh in their minds and that they'd know what is said in it. As Toph says, being chased by a homicidal Fire Nation princess and spending most of yesterday stuck in a hole is the life to you, referring to Sokka. When did Sokka get stuck in a hole? In bitter work with Fufu Foo Foo Cuddly Poops. Next to him. That was in bitter work. That was yesterday. Anything that is set after bitter work, like the library onwards, is the, the in-depth plot of book two. There's basically no gaps outside of, I suppose, them spending time in Bossing Se for them to do anything, but this book is clearly not set in Bossing Se. So your only spot for this story to be set is is in between bitter work and, and the library. And that is where it is set. And, and stuff like that tells you directly it is set here. After bitter work, but before the library. Very, very clear. It's your one gap that you have to play with. Especially because with Toph being a part of the group, you only have a small period of time in book two to work with. So I, 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 I don't get that. And look, Rachel Roberts is like the editor and stuff like that um, I, 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 I don't think it's particularly you know fair to just like really kind of go at her for you know not being like super crazy with the timeline continuity stuff but it was weird to see her follow up this book is set wherever your imagination thinks it's set in book two with saying that um, Toph Beifong's Metal Bending Academy is set after the rift like she knows when that one's set but not this one when this one directly says where it's set, I just thought that was a little bit weird and it's kind of like, is that really part of why you're doing these one shots is to avoid like technical questions like that? Um, I don't quite agree with that. And, and it just links into that whole idea of, you know, just telling these less important stories uh, and purposefully going away from the, the interesting stuff. But like I said, um, I do really want to know how soon now will we be getting back on track? Now, I think this discussion would be very different tonally if I knew what was happening with the Korra comics. Now, we know Rachel Roberts has confirmed there is a Korra comic trilogy coming. That's great, but we don't know who the writer is, we don't know who the artist is, and we don't know what the story actually is. It's great, it's positive that we finally get that announcement, but we shouldn't be getting super excited for something that we have expected for months and months and months. Just them making the absolute basic, most basic announcement shouldn't get super praise. 
we should really be questioning, okay, when you finally do come back and tell this story, is it going to be an important story? Or are you going to take the approach you're now taking with Avatar comics and basically put that into Korra comics? And are we going to get a, a, a kind of slightly unimportant Korra comic? That's not what we want. People want big stuff happening in the comics. Like, Rune to the Empire showed that more recently, it's not that they're afraid to do this important stuff with characters like Kuvira. They can still do that, but are they going to give us our, you know, finally seeing the Fire Nation and Korra time period, utilizing the characters that need development and so on? Or are you going to play it super safe and just, like, set it in Republic City and have it just be about the 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 stuff that, you know, Turf Wars was kind of about and, and so on? Um, that's That's what is kind of important like it, it's going to be very telling if mike is the writer on the core comic very key the other thing is like we don't even know about the artist i think everyone would like michelle wong to stay on board but you feel that if that was the case they'd have already announced it and so you know it's going to take longer if it's a new artist coming on board but we have to wait and see on that um so yeah it's it's such a frustrating, I think, position to be in, to, you know, we wait months and months and months to finally get the update about, like, why have you switched over to one shot? And when we get it, it's pretty much just about the worst, you know, statement that we could have got, which is that this is a purposeful decision to replace them with these. It's not that, you know... They're just a little bit behind on the time on organizing uh, the next you know continuation. No, they're just not doing it for the time being. And so yes, we finally get an update after so long, but it's an out of date update because Rachel Roberts basically just confirmed something to us that realistically happened eight, nine, ten months ago. That doesn't take into account Mike and Brian leaving the Netflix show and what that actually means for the franchise. Now. Again, because that only happened in June, realistically, anything that they are now newly working on is not going to get announced until a little bit later on. And we're not going to see the direct result of um, Mike and Brian's uh, enhanced involvement with things until quite a bit later on. Um, and what, whatever that is, is going to be key. Like, are they doing novels? Or um, will we see the return of the... You know, trilogies post imbalance now that they're, you know, back potentially willing and they're wanting to tell important stories. That you can tell to a, sort, a certain degree that like their passion about wanting to be involved with the Netflix live action show was just, you know, they finally come back after their big break to working on a big project again and they were trying to sort of make it as best possible, but creatively they weren't allowed to do that. They come out of that show having kind of not maybe accomplish what they wanted to do they still want to do create something they could do something big with a novel with a comic and you know some big ideas like i would love to see like potentially like mike and brian as the creative team on an avatar comic i don't know if brian would at all be up for you know being the artist on like a multi-part comic and stuff like that um i'm not sure about that but I, I'd, I'd love to just see that like mike and brian maybe as the writers of a comic and brian maybe doing like colors or something like that even uh, that they get an artist in but brian maybe does the colors so something like that it would be nice to just see the, the increased involvement from the the creators with the content um but again it, it is still speculation, but I think a lot depends on, on the core announcement, obviously. Because if we get a new writer, that kind of tells us that, like, oh, even the, the most recent Korra comic is still, when it was planned, it was still under the impression Mike and Brian are going to be, like, absent for a while or whatever, working on the Netflix show. Um, but I don't really have too much, uh, like, thoughts that, Mike is not going to be the writer on the core comics. I think it's more that the if they need to get a new artist, that could be what potentially is holding things up. Um, but that announcement really needs to come sooner rather than later. Um, and obviously by the time that's happening, we probably should be getting the announcement of the third one-shot. And hopefully soon after that, we see what's coming after that. Um, so 
the question is, do we see a shift once again with the Avatar comics, or will we see a second one-shot trilogy? Uh, that, that's where it's very difficult to figure out. Of like, I can't see them just doing one one-shot trilogy and leaving it. So my impression would be that at least we probably get like another one. So we'll have six one-shots, and then we might probably see a shift back with uh, the Avatar comics. But um, I don't know. A lot of this is just that, like, okay, you know, what wh what are Mike and Brian like up to now on the franchise? Um, it is interesting to have seen like this year, like a lot of like those extra books announced, all the different merchandise, like uh, toy lines and stuff like that. There's obviously much more activity surrounding the Avatar brand than there ever has been in quite a while. Highlighting that next year could be a very big year. And if they make the right announcements, we could really see Avatar get back on track. Uh, that this was just a very unfortunate year because of the virus and just it being a sort of transition point for a lot of the stories, you know, going from this to this and so on. And um, it just happens to have been a year that was very stop-start with content. But, you know, that's the uh, the situation that we're in. Um, I, I definitely think that they can't really stick with this for, to me, like six trilogies in a row. Unless they really drastically improve the quality of these one-shots in terms of the stories that are being told, I don't think it's okay to do this level of book for like the next, you know, five, ten years. Uh, we need to get back on track because I think, I think most of people's biggest problem with the comics is ultimately that progress is slow. We haven't really seen a major movement in the story as such since, I would say... You know, the search, the rift, and smoke and shadow. Realistically, they were the last times it felt like you know, kind of really, really important things happened in the story. Imbalance, you know, obviously touched on some nice stuff, like getting us to stuff that was like felt more directly linking into Korra time period. But it was still very, very early. The characters are still very, very young. I think a lot of people still would like a time skip to happen to make the characters even older than they are now. And actually, you know, hit a time period where we can really make the big moves to Republic City. Rather than all these, like, subtle setups to eventually get to something that will happen in, like, 5-10 years. That that sort of style thing. So, um, yeah, th th they're my thoughts on um, the direction of Avatar Comics going forward. In the comments, let me know what your thoughts are. W what are your thoughts on the decision of Dark Horse and Mike and Brian to do the one-shot style books move away from the comic trilogies advancing the story and where you think they're going to go now that Mike and Brian are no longer working on the Netflix show and they were back when they made the decision to do this with the Avatar comics. What do you think is going to happen? But yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.